The following is a paid advertisement. The views expressed are the sole responsibility of the advertiser. I'm attorney Justin Carter. Coming up just ahead on You Have Real Estate, you want to be a real estate developer, huh? That's just ahead. You want to buy some property to make some money off of it? That's just ahead. And so much more to get to. It's all just ahead that you have real estate. Are you worried about your student loan payments? I don't blame you. The great news for you is now we have more options than ever. Go to our website, youhavepower.com, to find out what options may exist for you and your student loans. You Have Real Estate is proudly sponsored by Renewal by Anderson, your full-service window and door replacement company. Learn more at rbafla.com. Welcome to You Have Real Estate, as always, presented by Renewal by Anderson. I am your host, Justin Clark. A wonderful show ahead for you today. You will not want to miss a single second, but first, the opening statement. I've been getting this question a lot. It seems like a lot of people have some cash hidden away, and they want to invest in real estate. You want to become a real estate developer. How do you do that? Wonderful question. Also today on the show, let's talk about snowbirds and how they affect real estate and really the real estate market throughout florida and finally today i've been getting this question a lot as well should i wait until the election to buy or sell real estate it's a good question all very good questions and we're going to answer them by asking real questions every weekend here on the program we ask real questions to the truly trend-setting people in central florida's real estate community so happy to be joined here we'll kick it off with our good friends from Ocala Realty World. I have Alicia here. Hi, Alicia, how are you? Wonderful. You brought a good friend who I know as well, Nina, as well. Hi, Nina, how are you? Good, great, thank well, you for having us. I'm dying to start with this question because I hear it for, for almost everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna buy a car till the election. Let's see what yeah. happens at the election. I'm not gonna invest in this or that until the election. People are saying that about real estate mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Should people not buy or sell right now waiting on the election? Nina? I wouldn't, no. When you find the right property as, as a buyer, you know, and you qualify for the financing or if you have the cash available, go for it. You know, it's no reason to wait. Alicia, what do you think? It's always a good time to buy it. So. <laughs> well, always. you know, we get the same question, too, mm -hmm. with people who are, are sitting on the sidelines mm -hmm. now not buying because mm -hmm. they say, well, I'll wait on the election because interest rates are going to go down then I'll, and I'll wait mm -hmm. till that point. That can be dangerous as well. What would you tell that person? I mean, they're history shows that they're most likely going to miss the boat. I mean, it happened when the market crashed in 08, and they're like, oh, I should have. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. should have, could have, would have. You just do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if someone does buy now, let's say, and the interest rate is relatively high, but if you look at history, interest rates now aren't even high historically, mm -hmm. But then there is an election, and let's say the interest rates do come down. I mean, they have options to refinance at that point, sell, mm -hmm. buy something exactly. else. I mean, there, there are many options for them, even mm -hmm. if they buy now, right? But here's what I see happening. I believe that if the interest rates do plummet, which I, I don't know, I have no idea, no crystal ball on that. I think that they're probably going to stay about the same, maybe come down a little bit. That's going to make the buyer's market even more mm -hmm. competitive and mm -hmm. more difficult for people to buy a house. Exactly. Uh, I was just going to say that. Yeah. Yes. I should have let you say yes. it. I feel, I, I, feel like a, I feel like a jerk. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, so let's talk about Ocala a little mm -hmm. bit because I know people from all over the country, mm -hmm. South Florida as well, moving to Ocala uh, in droves, really. A lot of new construction in Ocala mm -hmm. that is reasonably priced. Mm -hmm. way more reasonably priced than even mm -hmm. in Orlando, and a nice brand new house. What do you say to someone when they're talking about purchasing new construction? New construction is just a, a fantastic way to purchase right now because interest rates, like you mentioned, interest rates are a little bit higher right now. And most of the builders, major builders, they offer reduced interest rates. They offer rate buy down, making that mortgage payment more affordable monthly. And they also cover most of your closing costs. Yeah. So in addition, you get a brand new home. Everything is under warranty. And typically it's either equal price or even less than pre-owned homes. Yeah, I was talking to one of my mm -hmm. lawyers about this yesterday because he bought a brand new construction mm -hmm. home and he was talking about all the bells and whistles and I was yes. almost kind of jealous of him because <laughs> he didn't have to update anything as nice. What are some of the advantages of a brand new home? It's brand new. So, <laughs> and if you get in at that point that you could actually pick some of the 
um, upgrades and you know colors and features it's even better but this way you don't have to worry about <coughs> fixing everything and your insurance rates are going to be a lot lower because it's brand new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you oftentimes seeing developers help with things like closing costs mm -hmm. and, and other items to, to really help make the transaction easier for a buyer? Yes yeah. yeah most of the major builders especially they do offer they cover most of the closing costs and also reduced interest rate yeah. so it is more affordable yeah. for the buyer to purchase new construction. I, I, I agree. I do not think you should wait for an election. By the way, I saw a bumper sticker this morning. It said giant meteor for 2024. I guess, <laughs> I guess they didn't like either of their options. You know what I mean? But I thought that was Neutral. funny. Yeah. Let, let's talk about snowbirds. And, and by the way, investing in real estate in Ocala in Marion County right now is fantastic. Whether it's your primary home, much more affordable, or you want to do some investment real estate in Ocala, there's so many great places you can buy and then lease them out on Airbnb. The Airbnb market is crazy up there because of all the horse stuff mm -hmm. and World Equestrian Center. I have a QR code on the screen for you right now. All you have to do is take out your phone. It will connect you directly with Ocala Realty World. These nice ladies will send you listings as they come live and you can see what you can buy right then. And sometimes they even have pocket listings that they can let you know about before they even hit the market. Mm -hmm. Or if you're looking to sell your house in the Ocala, really anywhere throughout Marion County, they are great at, at getting a, the top dollar for your house as well. I do want to talk about snowbirds for a second though, mm -hmm. because Florida is obviously notorious for snowbirds. Mm -hmm. Is Ocala like the rest of Florida when it comes to snowbirds? It really is. Okay. And actually, mm -hmm. I have a really quick funny story about snowbirds because I didn't realize that some people don't know what that is. And our friend Ella, <laughs> Coach Ella, yeah. well, the first time she visited, I was like, gosh, look at all the snowbirds. They're finally here. Like, the traffic <laughs> is crazy. And she's ducking around like, what are snowbirds uh, like a bird? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I just laughed so hard because I didn't know that that's not like a common thing. Mm -hmm. So those are the retirees that come down and... Did you tell her area. it was a snowbird that pooped on your yeah, car? Right. Yeah, yeah, she was like ducking <laughs> and everything, and yeah, it was funny. Yeah. So snowbirds That's are not real birds. Yeah. <laughs> when, when do they come and go? I know it's yeah. seasonal. When, when do you find them it's, heading back north, and when do they come back here? Typically, they arrive October, November, when it starts getting colder yeah. up north, and then they leave April, May, when it starts getting too warm for them in Florida. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I have neighbors who are snowbirds from Wisconsin. That's their <clears> schedule every single year. <laughs> Is, does it make me a bad person that I don't like snowbirds and I'll tell you why <laughs> I, I, I don't like retired people on Monday mornings number right, one because right. I'm going to work and they're riding their bikes that is true. Mm -hmm. and I don't like snowbirds because when it's about to be super hot here they're like oh I'm heading back to Massachusetts right. heading to the Cape <laughs> yes I don't, I don't dislike them I'm right, kind of joking yeah. but you know yeah. come on yeah. it's a pretty good way of living mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so maybe there are people here visiting right now who are looking to have a retirement mm -hmm. place down in Florida or, or looking to have a, just a second home down in Florida why would you tell them that Marion County on Ocala would be a wonderful place for them? Well, one of the biggest reasons that it's one of the most popular areas now for retirees to come down is because the insurance rates, I believe, are number three for the lowest in the state of Florida. And where unemployment used to be number three for unemployment, now mm -hmm. we're like, what, number two, I believe, mm -hmm. for employment. So it's just such a growing area, but you still can live on a budget. Got mm -hmm. it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Wonderful to see you, Nina. Thank mm -hmm. you for joining. Go, thank join you. us more. Yes, I, I like I, it I, when you're here. I would love to. <laughs> Alicia, always a pleasure. Thank, thank you for you. being here. Mm -hmm. Reach out to them today. QR code right here on the screen. I'm telling you, don't miss the boat on Ocala Real Estate. It's fantastic. A great way to invest. But also, if you find yourself feeling like you can't afford a house to live in for you and your family, Ocala is way cheaper, 40% cheaper mm -hmm. than, than a lot of parts of Central Florida. You will really like it. Here's what we're going to do. After the complaints I get from the retired people, I was just joking. About, <laughs> you want to get into investment real estate, what should you do as you have real estate continues? Do you have allergies? Do your children have allergies? Well, at least you know in your home you are safe from allergies, right? No, you're not. The windows in your home can be giving allergies a, a major boost to, to your family. This is very scary. Dan Brigman's here. Renewal by Anderson. You think when you're in your house, you're safe from all this outdoor stuff, but you're not. You're absolutely right. You think so, but what we've learned is as the season gets warmer and these allergies start to come out, what also happens is our AC runs a lot more, right? When your AC runs, remember, there's a return in the house. It's sucking air from somewhere. If you have broken seals in your window, that pollen, those allergenic, anything can be pulled through there. And the more that AC is running, 
the more those allergies that are coming into your home and therefore you're waking up stuffed up get your windows checked out qr code is on the screen right now you talk about ac though when i hear my ac running i immediately think my electricity bill oh my gosh it's that time of year where i have to pay a ton of money to my electricity bill windows though contribute to that bill as well 100 percent. it's time to put a stop to the high energy bills you have to uh and there's a lot of other reasons to make the investment but that's one of the biggest ones uh what will happen is when you replace these windows which equate to about 25 percent of the square foot of your home that's a lot of glass that's one whole wall of the house all of that sun beating in and on even the chilly days, uh, that cool, that heat that you have inside going out, uh, that will reduce your energy bill somewhere between the neighborhood of 20 and 30 percent. In most cases, will reduce that payment enough to pay for the windows themselves. Oh, I love it, Dan. Thank you. Great job as always. Do yourself a favor. Check out your windows today with Renewal by Anderson. You're sitting on some cash. You want to get into real estate. You think Florida is going to be such a, an amazing place, this rebirth of Florida. And I agree with you. I don't blame you. But, but what do you do when you start thinking, I want to be a real estate investor? Do you buy apartments and rent them out? Do you buy a single family home and rent it out? Or do you get into real estate development? Because I've heard where, that's where the money's at. We're about to find out. So happy to be joined by Chad Newberry. Uh, Newberry Realty, but also a big development guy as well. Welcome to the show. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. And, you know, anyone could say they're a real estate developer, I guess, but, but really you have to know what you're doing in some ways. When you have someone approach you and say they want to get into real estate development, what do you tell them? First, I tell them it's pretty difficult, um, but it's also incredibly rewarding. Um, so it's really a genuine passion of mine, and I'm so glad I got into it. Um, but there's a lot of moving parts that you need to understand. Um, so it's a very complex uh, field, um, but it's great. Yeah, how do you know who to trust in that world? Yeah, trust is a big one. So um, it really just takes developing relationships, working with them on small projects, then moving up to bigger projects. And if there's synergy, synergy you just, you, just you, you feel, like you really want to commit to them and you end up, a lot of our investors just stay with us in the long, for a really long time because of that trust. Yeah, now you've even developed a program where you're training people on real estate development. Tell me about that. Yeah, so um, I learned um, life coaching and I really did it so that I could develop the skills that I needed to get through the struggles that I came across in being, becoming a real estate developer. And when I would share with people what I do, that I own a real estate company, I own a construction company, and I do it so I can do real estate development, they just start so fascinated by it. And they constantly are like, Chad, I would love to learn what you do. So I took it as an opportunity to create a program and mentor people who want to get into real estate development and do small pocket communities like what I do. Who would call you? Who, who would have an interest to call you? Is it someone that's already been into development? Is it someone who's thinking about real estate development? Yeah, I think it's really three categories that really fall into real estate development. It's either people that are already established in real estate and want to elevate their real estate game, um, people that have a lot of experience in construction and they want to get into the real estate development game, or if you're an investor and you already are like maybe doing flips, but you want to get into new spec houses um, and you want to even elevate that up and start building small communities, those seem to be the three um, areas where people really start wanting to engage in real estate development. I don't think people understand what real estate development means. I don't think I understand what real estate development <clears throat> means. I think big apartment complex, huge office building, it can be a little smaller than that as well, can't it? Yeah. So our specialty is pocket communities, residential. So building um, small communities of single family houses um, that can be sold. And the process is very complex. I mean, it starts from all the way from finding the land, doing your due diligence, building the performa, building a business plan, presenting it to investors, finding the money with banks, then building it and then selling it. So it's a really a long game type profession, I would say, um, but incredibly rewarding again. And if you'd like to talk about real estate and uh, development, you want to get into that game, this is the man to talk to. The phone number is right here, 407-205-0400. But you don't just talk the talk, you have walked the walk and continue to walk the walk. 
all these developments you've been involved in that, that are currently in development too, tell me about some of the developments you've been involved in. Um, so some of the real estate developments, we built um, Ponce Inlet Key out in Ponce Inlet. That was my first real estate development project. It consisted of five houses. They were all mansions, basically. <laughs> and um, um, But um, they all sold, and that was like my first real estate development exp um, experience. Now what I'm doing is I'm building small communities in the downtown Orlando area, building smaller houses, um, but um, but equally as fascinating on that first deal the first community in Ponce Inlet when you when you went to the closing on that last property on that last mansion what were the emotions like for you oh it was I was so excited yeah. I don't know it was very fulfilling and it's great to just stand back and look at this like beautiful community and you're like that wouldn't exist if if if, if I didn't do it <laughs> so it's kind of amazing I love it it's what, great what developments do you see for yourself in the future um, I really like building the smaller um, pocket communities um, in highly desirable areas. So a lot of infill projects, um, big houses, mansions, they're great, but smaller houses, I feel like there's such a demand for housing and trying to build smaller houses uh, for people so they can get into the housing market is really a sweet spot that I want to target right now. Got it. Any questions for chat? 407-205-0400. Is there a particular type of person that ends up becoming a real estate developer? Is it someone that's just been successful in the financial world? Is it someone who is a real estate agent? Is there anyone in particular that, that really leads itself to, to being a developer? You really just have to be ambitious and have a stick to and just really want to do it. I don't know if it's really a special kind of person other than you just really have to be determined, have a stick to itiveness, and believe in yourself. There are a lot of moving parts, I imagine, with developing real estate. Uh, what are the most challenging aspects of it? Everything. <laughs> Getting through zoning is yeah. one of the biggest challenges. Um, I feel like I go through city comments endlessly, um, but Actually, I just dropped off milers for two of my plats that I'm building in College Park today. So that was very rewarding. So I'll probably have a glass of wine later this <laughs> afternoon. Um, so um, yeah, so getting through zoning is probably the biggest part. Getting through construction, managing the timeline, that's a difficult part. And then hoping like hell that the they sell at the price that you're forecasting. Right. A lot of people who are, again, thinking about getting into real estate development, I think, I imagine if they have some money, they're going to get into it by stroking a check to someone. I mean, that, that might be the first way in to be involved in, in, in a development. But again, it's scary to just stroke, stroke a check to someone. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you, you don't know if you can trust them or not. What are some of the th ways you should research the people you're going to work with? Um, well, I, I guess, okay, so if you're going to be the investor, I guess, I would just do your due diligence and see, you know, because you're going to need a real estate person, you're going to need a construction person, and you're also going to need the person that wants to put the project together. So you're really going to need those three components if you're wanting to be an investor. So I would just, I mean, I guess network. I yeah. guess networking is the best thing. Like, get just talk to as many people in, the, in those industries or those fields and um, build camaraderie. That was really good stuff. We have to have you back. I want to talk more about this. We haven't really addressed real estate development much on the show in, in six years. Can you come back, please? Yes. I'd be All right. Chad that. Newberry, everyone. 407-205-0400. He is the man to show you how to get into real estate development, which is a wonderful field. It's a great way to make some money, but you have to know what you're doing. He'll tell you. Quick break. When we return, we're going to take some tours of some properties together as you have real estate continues. 2023 has come and gone. I know on your list of things to do was get my roof inspected. You see leaks coming in, or your roof has just gotten old. 2024 is the year to do that. One place to turn is my good friends at Universal Roof and Contracting, joined by Justin and Corey. Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year. You too. Thanks you did my roof last year, and they did such a great job. QR code is here on the screen, by the way. If you have any roof leaking, or if your roof is old, you need to have someone look at it today. You're not just roofers, you're general contractors, which really saved the day on my house. What difference does that make? 
a huge difference. It's really, it makes us a one-stop shop. If there's anything on a structural level or anything beyond the roof line that needs to be handled as a, as a point of doing the roof, um, we can actually handle that circumstance in real time with real solutions and not have you to take back over and get other GCs involved to handle that. Um, so really it just gives us, makes us very versatile and it allows us to open up a huge book of services to make sure all your best needs are met. A lot of roofing companies gone out of business getting bought up right now and they're doing that because when they get the phone call, they literally don't go to the person's house. They get mm -hmm. an aerial photo of the roof and you, they call up and say, okay, we're gonna put a new roof on, not your strategy at all. Not at all, it just happened yesterday with me. <laughs> yeah, the homeowner was surprised I showed up and, uh, and I'm glad I did because there were so many little intricacies about the roof that had to be addressed to make a proper scope of work. So we're big believers in showing up, uh, doing a proper inspection, making sure that we're gonna address everything. So there's no surprises on the back end. With my house, we were able to file an insurance claim thanks to you guys, really. You helped me through that process. Sometimes you can't file an insurance claim for the people who have to pay, you have payment plans available that make it really simple. Absolutely, uh, financing is a real thing out there. It's a useful tool. It's a way for us to not only get your roof done, completed, but you can defer all your money issues until the next year uh, and then we can still get your roof done in the real time. Thank you guys for all you did for me, Thanks all you've done for our audience here. Do yourself a favor, check out Universal Roof and Contracting right now. Welcome back to the program. We talk about real estate investing. I'm a big advocate of investing in properties for Airbnb. I think that a lot of times if you do your research, you can make some money. Let's ask some friends of mine if they agree with me though from Exit Global Realty. Angeli is here. How are you? Good to see you. Huh? Welcome to the show. Never been here. No, never been here. And a return visitor, Elena Rivera is here. Hi, Elena. How are you? Good to be here. Airbnb, you. you're working with a buyer who's looking for investment real estate. What do you tell them about Airbnb? What do we tell them? It's a great investment. It's a great way to have that as a vacation home, um, make some some money on your investment in the meantime. But it's you know it's very flexible with the the amount that you can either reserve it, reserve um, keep it open for yeah. others to use it, for use it for your families. Yeah. I think they're they're wonderful properties. And what do you tell your buyers? Well, I personally own an Airbnb oh. and I love it. And I tell them that um, it's a great way to invest and the wear and tear is, isn't is there like you would in your long-term rentals. So that's a great thing. And it's always the residual coming in that's nice. Um, yeah. So just a great investment overall. So you make money hopefully, and but you can use it as well if you want. It can yeah, be absolutely. a second home for your family. Yeah. So it's it's really nice kind of a win-win for families out there. And speaking of Airbnb, this is a furnished Airbnb that you have on Calabria Avenue. Tell me about this one. Yeah, down in Davenport. So it's really close to Disney, about 10 minutes away fully furnished in a luxurious <clears throat> resort community, very family friendly, has all of your pools, your golf community, your arcade, um, uh, two stories, comes with everything, four bedrooms, three and a half bathrooms. It's a great space. I fight with HOAs for a living sometimes. <laughs> yeah. What do you tell a potential buyer though about making sure it's okay with the HOA? What do you do? What kind of homework do, needs to be done? Definitely contacting them and seeing <clears throat> if the short lease is there for the Airbnbs. Um, also for any upcoming assessments, because that might increase yeah. the HOA and just um, what other things? Yeah, so yeah, I mean, you just want to do your research, you know, what restrictions do they have? This particular community, they do allow short-term yeah. rentals. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another one for sale. They do not allow the, you know, one to seven days. It's right. more long-term. Do your homework. You don't want to buy it thinking you can rent it short term and not, obviously. Do your homework. Absolutely. Staying in Davenport here on Mandovi Street, uh, tell me about this. Yeah, so what I love about Davenport is that I see a lot of people moving from Kissimmee to Davenport. <clears throat> Kissimmee's populated right now. Davenport's more peaceful, but it's still close to Disney. So I see a lot of people moving there. That property is great. It's um, a long-term lease, but if you say, find a buyer that is actually working in Disney or wants to move away from Kissimmee, it would be a great property or even an investment. Yeah. If you watched the show before this, Best of Central Florida, you know I was in New Smyrna Beach this week for, for that show. I like New Smyrna a lot. This is a great condo here. Yes. Yes. Beautiful oceanfront condo, two bedrooms, two bathrooms, um, you know, 1,800 square feet. Uh, new roof the hoa does a good job with taking care of that um new balcony really great view and perfect for you know, that one is not short-term rental but again perfect for your snowbirds 
or any of those that want a vacation, use them for themselves or their families. And then not so far from the garlic, which everyone loves oh, in New yeah. Smyrna Beach. Get in line, though. My, <laughs> my, it's packed all the yeah, time, isn't it? It's Flagler Avenue is my spot. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Exit Global. What are you guys all about? Mm -hmm. Exit Global Realty. So we, um, we opened our doors in August of last year growing very quickly. We have 27 agents uh, wow. owned by myself, Christina Peacock and Wendy Wagner. Uh, we're all about building our, our, our agents up and training them and giving them the resources and tools, also connecting them to our partners within the community mm -hmm. to be able to provide the knowledge and the resources so they have the best you know, partnerships at hand. Yeah. What areas of Central Florida are you seeing where you can still get some kind of a deal? Anywhere? Any communities you're like, you know what, you can still get a bang for your buck there? Yeah, more rural. I would say mm -hmm. like Sanford, yeah. um, St. Cloud, right? Like everything on the outskirts. Yeah. Sanford, mm -hmm. St. Cloud. Ocoee. Ocoee. I yeah. mean, out, out to Ocala. <clears throat> I know. I mean, there, there are places that you can still buy a house at a decent price. Absolutely. You're just going a little bit further out. But our, our highways are going further out as well. I mean, right. I think that we're really making places that once felt further away. Right. A little bit closer, like Ocala, you're right. Yeah. I think you can get a little further away and, and get a bang for your buck. Yeah. What do you see happening the rest of the year in this real estate market? What's going to happen? I think there's going to be a lot of negotiations and communication between realtors, especially with the whole uh, NAR legal yeah. um, suit. So I see that happening. Um, and just like showing your worth and and talking more to, to the seller's realtor for, as, as a buyer's realtor. Yeah. I think it's going to be a great year here in Florida yeah. for real estate. It's uh, booming. Florida is right. booming. We're lucky to be here. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Angeli, uh, Elena. Come back and see us soon. Great job. All Thank right. You. Uh, thank you to our amazing guest today. That show was fantastic. I hope you enjoyed it. To our crew, you guys are the best. They were eating during half the show, but the best in the business. Most importantly, thank you. See you again next week for more You Have Real Estate. Welcome back to our house. Or do you want to welcome them? Welcome back to our home. Last time you were here, if you remember, we had installed a brand new Duquesne system. Our friends from Old Dash sent it over. I love it. But your only concern, <laughs> of course, was you were hot. She was so hot, she I couldn't was. take we it. Live in Florida. You thought she was going to melt. My concern was the energy efficiency. I wanted to make sure our electric bill went down. Well, now I think the proof is in the pudding. I'm so <laughs> impressed. Let's see how we've done. All right, so we're in our real house, by the way, I want to it's be clear. And, and we have a fake. real Duquesne <laughs> Lynx inverter heat pump system. And the amount of money we're saving per month, unbelievable. How are we doing? We have it right here. These I are the real bills. You tell me. It's crazy to think that we've gone from $300 down to $140. I'm um, sure you like that. I, I love it. It made it all <laughs> worthwhile for sure. In the last three months of consumption with the old AC unit, we consumed an average of 1,300 kilowatts, while with the new Duquesne Lynx unit, we consumed an average of 886 kilowatts, 33% less. Unbelievable. Now, if you look at it though by saving money, which is what I'm really looking at, we're down like 100 something bucks a month. This is unbelievable. As you can see, Duquesne Lynx is the right choice. This unit has quick link inverter technologies, high efficiency, 18 sear, and quiet operation, which I love. Want to know more about Duquesne Lynx? Visit the website on the screen right now or visit them on Facebook. Thanks for stopping by our house again. And thank you to Duquesne for saving me money. You need to check them out today. The proceeding was a paid advertisement. The views expressed were the sole responsibility of the advertiser.